member of my staff, Jim Bowers, who's uh, been involved in some of you know um, because of that for several years. And um, alluding to something Don mentioned earlier, I'm from the group that studies health outcomes. We call our section the Community Exposure Research Section. And we work pretty much daily with the other folks that you're seeing here from the New York State Health Department. But the part of this project that we've been involved in is really quite different. We were first asked, I think, late in 2006, by Newtown Creek Alliance to talk with them about um, a possible health study for the Newtown Creek area. And um, I believe Jim um, worked with the group um, over the course of probably six separate um, meetings to talk about all the kinds of issues. Months. What? to talk about all the kinds of issues that we're, um, that we talk about whenever we get these requests from communities. We do this kind of activity throughout New York State. So, so with that kind of, I, I just want to sort of get a sense of the separation of the health outcome data efforts and um, trying to work towards a health outcome study um, compared to the public health assessment, which is really a separate process. But the health outcome study is mentioned in the public health assessment. Um, obviously, it's, it's, the, it's about the Newtown Creek, and so that's why we're here tonight. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I think that's right. Okay, so um, just a little background before I talk about those points. Um, we. There's a couple things that are really important in terms of why we meet with communities, um, usually over the course of quite a bit of time um, before going forward with a health outcome study. Um, I can't emphasize too much, and you all already know this, but it's really hard to study human beings. You know, we can't put ourselves in the lab and do controlled experiments. So in order to try to learn something about whether exposures have affected people's health, we have to think carefully about what group of people are we going to study. We have to try to define a group of people with a particular unusual exposure and then compare them with a general population or a population that does not have that exposure. And so the process of um, talking about boundaries for a study area, that's where that becomes very important. Um, an another really important issue is that for a lot of types of health outcomes, we don't have very good data. So we always like to make sure people realize the sorts of um, valid and good studies we can do and understand their limitations, but also understand um, that there's some things that we wish we could study, but we really don't have um, the kind of quality data that we would need to conduct <coughs> studies for a lot of health outcomes that we would love to be able to study. So, it's those kind of discussions we always like to have before we go forward with a study. Now, in prior meetings, um, I've already alluded to some of these points. We really tried to get a sense of the community's environmental health concerns. We talked about the types of studies that a health department can do, um, what those studies can tell us, um, what they can't tell us. Um, we worked on boundaries for a study area. Um, and I'm not sure how much Jim emphasized this, but since I'm giving this talk, I, I threw in that it's a stepwise process. It's never a fait accompli saying, oh, this is the type of study we're going to do. No matter what we find, that's the end of it. It's a stepwise process in that if we learn something new along the way, or if the study itself tells us something we didn't expect, um, then we reevaluate and see what the appropriate next steps are. Oops. It's a really pretty, pretty simple question, but it's, it's, it can be important and it can be helpful, especially if you think of it as a first step or a screening step. And it's, are there more adverse health outcomes observed among residents of the study area than among residents of areas not near Newtown Creek or 
areas where the exposure scenario may be different. Now, I, I feel that I have to say that we don't actually know about um, particular unusual exposures around the creek. So in this case, um, I would describe this approach that we've developed as one that's really trying to, res trying to respond to community concerns about the creek. Go ahead. And again, pretty straightforward. We compare the number of people diagnosed with a health condition while living in the study area with the number of people we would expect to develop that health condition uh, based on a comparison population. And for the studies that we've been talking about doing in Newtown Creek, for the most part, if the study comparison population would be um, Brooklyn and Queens. Go ahead. So over the course of um, meetings that were held, and of course, um, I worked with Jim, and he would come back and tell me what was going on, but I wasn't at the meetings, as you know. But a quarter mile boundary was developed through some process in terms of an attempt to respond to concerns about health issues, adverse health outcomes um, in the Newtown Creek area. And that, this map shows a, a one quarter mile boundary, so go ahead. Um, some, some points were thrown up there as an example of health outcomes and what they might look scattered over the area. Um, we obviously can't just look at a map and learn anything. We, we look at um, rates of outcomes per population. So go ahead. And then let's just go on to the next one. Um, the health outcomes that we're um, proposing to look at are birth outcomes, which include preterm births, um, low birth weight births, um, and all types of birth defects and all types of cancer. And um, when we look at cancer, we look at all types combined together. We also look at 19 separate types among women, 17 among men. Um, so it's a very comprehensive look at um, all of these outcomes. And the um, final thing I wanted to mention is where we are right now. Um, we've gone through the process of getting all our approvals. We, we have certain requirements for our institutional review board, which protects on the ethical side in terms of protecting subjects of research. We, we sent them some protocol revisions and we got approvals for the use of our data. We've already geocoded all our cancer data. Um, we've got our approvals for the birth data. Um, we don't actually have that data yet. And from, from my recollection, we've, we felt that we had come to an agreement about what this study area would, how it would be defined somewhere in 2010. Um, maybe it was more like um, 2009, but giving ourselves a two to three year window, we had hoped to have this study done by the end of the summer, um, this summer. We've been backed up a little bit by a different study, so now we're saying early 2013. And so that's where we are, and I'm gonna hand it back to Betsy to, to moderate. <laughs> 